should talk about grad school. The, the best thing about Brown University is the age of the place. It's beautiful. It's 17th century buildings and uh, arches, porticos, uh, beautiful brick structures and marble everywhere and statues. And all of this kicked off in me the desire to, well, the, an, an ancient urge, I guess, to, to go places where you're not supposed to go, to see things you're not supposed to be, to, to see. And my little friends here, Help me with that. Um, two sling pieces of metal, uh, and nobody can tell you you can't go. Nobody can say do not enter. You just slide one in gently, oh so gently, and give it a little wiggle and a little jiggle and apply some tension and oh baby, click and she gives up all of her secrets. So these are my life things. Uh, and, and, and on this campus, I wanted to go to all of the, the most secret places. I wanted, well, I started simple, I guess, with uh, the roof of the chemistry building. The chemistry building was, was one of the grandest, and uh, several stories, and, and arches, and porticos, and, and such. And I wanted to be on the roof. So I found the door to the attic, and it took some wiggling, some jiggling, only about a minute and a half, maybe not, not too bad a lot. If it's, if it's too new, it's tricky. If it's too old, then it's stiff. But I... I <laughs> you're reading this metaphorically. <laughs> I made it into the attic, but I didn't even get to the roof that night. I, I found things there, uh, old furniture and, and, and boxes full of broken lab equipment, things like that and uh, a file cabinet full of lab manuals back from, I guess, when there were only four elements. And I, I, I collected a bunch of those, and it, it was actually several days later before I made it onto the roof where, oh, to be on that roof, looking down on the people below, I felt like Batman oh, awaiting a, a distress call, except actually any kind of alarm would have been terrifying. <laughs> but after a while, the roofs of the campus weren't, weren't enough to, to do it for me anymore. I set my sights on a tower, on Cary Tower. Oh, Cary Tower. Uh, named, named for an old Wayfish scion of the, the Brown clan, Cary, Cary Matilda Brown. I guess she died and her husband wanted to preserve her memory, and so he built this tower um, over which, over the door to which he inscribes, love is strong as death. Isn't that beautiful? Don't you want to get up in that? I did too. And so I struggled, and every night for two weeks I, I tried to get into Cary Tower, and I, I, I think the wiggling was right, the jiggling was right, and I, I turned the lock several times, but I guess that wasn't really attached to whatever they used to seal it off when the stairway was condemned. I don't know why they're worried about this sort of thing. This could have been, and, and was for I guess a while, an, an obsession for me that, that might have lasted the rest of my days until I developed another obsession. The indoor pool. <laughs> Brown's indoor pool. I mean, picture yourself sinking into the forbidden waters. Oh, so beautiful. And uh, the first night that I that I tried to break into the pool, it didn't even take the, the jiggling, the wiggling. It was, uh, I guess the metal plate had fallen off of, of the front of the, had, had come off of the front of the lock, and all I needed was a long, thin screwdriver to, to pop that and get into where I only needed to, like, hide out from the the security and make my way through another door to get to the pool, over the pool, over the pool. Imagine sinking into those forbidden waters. And it was wonderful, but the, the big thing for me probably at the time was the high dive, the diving platform. Um, I, I have a problem with heights myself. There's no way that was funny. I have a, a, a problem with heights, but there, there's magic in the middle of the night when nobody's around, when you're in the dark. and so. I could, I could climb up to the top of that platform and jump off, no problem, after 20, 30 minutes of, of stealing myself. <laughs> that sort of victory needs to be shared with others. And so I made a tradition out of it. Uh, I started bringing people there, 2, 3 in the morning, uh, after going out dancing at Club Hell in downtown Providence, like this place, Goth Club, it was wonderful. Uh, collect, you know, the first couple of weeks, 2, 3 people, eventually like as many as 8. Uh, two in the morning. Uh, you, well, you have to picture us. Uh, everybody doffing their goth gear, kicking off the boots and the leather pants and the chains, and uh, pallid white makeup floating away from the girls as they splash around. Uh, 
uh, all skinny dipping and just loving life. And of course, every night I jumped off that high dive platform. There's no way that's five minutes. <laughs> it was eight or eight or nine times before we were busted. Before I guess phys ed courses must have TAs because some you know haggard twenty something dude wandered in at three eight, three thirty in the morning. I don't know if that's late night or early morning. Um, wandered into the the, the coach's offices, but he must have heard giggling because he came back and turned on the house lights and said indignantly, excuse me. And I replied, could you give us a minute? We're naked. And he said, I think you should go now. So not, not really busted at the time. Uh, I, so of course I went back many times after that, but I think they'd repaired the door, the new faceplate on that, so I had trouble getting in. Uh, I was determined though. I was determined, particularly one night, I think I'd imbibed a little extra alcohol, and I really wanted to impress Bethany. Oh, Bethany. So I said, come with me tonight after we finish dancing, and I'll show you something you've never seen before. <laughs> and I knew that the front door, I wasn't going to be able to get in. I tried, I tried, but it wasn't going to happen, so I went around to the back. And, and a, little, a little wiggling, a little jiggling, turned, click, and we got in, but damn it. It was some kind of mechanical room, uh, pumps and, and filters and the heavy smell of chlorine, but no way to the pool itself except for, well, one cinder block's worth of space, a metal grate that I was able to pull away. No way I'm squeezing through that cinder block size. But Bethany, she, was, she had the narrow shoulders, squirmed in, opened the door for me, and we swam, and we swam, and it was, well, as you can imagine, just, just glorious. Except that at this point, I'm really in danger of permanent friend status because we're, we're naked, but there's no excuse for touching. I mean, what am I supposed to do? So we, we finish swimming and we head out and we go out the back door. And this is, of course, when we're busted. When we hear in the parking lot the, the sound of a car on the, on the gravel and we duck behind a big, I don't know, air conditioner, uh, transformer unit sort of thing. And cross our fingers and hope, no, 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 go on. But the car stops, the door opens, the guy comes out, and I grab Bethany by the shoulders and I say, follow my lead. And as, as the security guard, I was gonna say cop, but as the security guard, let's face it, turns the corner, we see, I, I grab her and I, I kiss the hell out of her. And, and he just finds a couple of kids making out, and what's the problem with that? Of course, he knows what's really going on, and so, he assumes that we're going to break into the pool. He didn't know because it's winter. We're wearing hats over our wet hair. It's not entirely clear that we've already, uh, already been swimming. Um, he takes takes my name. I, I must have appeared in campus crime reports or something. It's not it's not a terribly bad bust, but eventually he, he goes away. Uh, I I tell him I was just escorting this woman home after a party. We cut through the parking lot. He goes away, and Bethany turns toward me, and she puts her hands on her hips, and she takes a step back and says, What was that all about, mister? 